Good afternoon. My name is Bryson Hill, and I represent Dapley. We started in 2015 with the mission to take back the internet. And what that means is to literally take back the data that we have given up so easily to these advertisers of our data. And we've made a little compromise, a little give and a little take. We upload a little piece of our data, and they advertise that to their resellers, their partners, and they make a little bit of money off of us, just a little bit. And the bargain that we made is they, gave, they give us a little convenience for what we've given them. But what we realized is that we had to take back that data. And so what we had to do first was take back the internet account. The internet account, as we all know, is the domain that you can sync to your devices with your email, your notes, your calendars, your reminders. And that internet account is something that they now host for us, and we need to host that for ourselves. And that's what we call the Web 2.0 is this internet account infrastructure that's run on DNS. But there's a fundamental flaw with DNS, and that is DNS is fundamentally a man in the middle. DNS is a structure that is hosted by third parties, starting with ICANN and then top-level domains and servers all over the world providing these services to us. Now, I didn't realize this until pretty recently, but ICANN is a political organization that has men with guns protecting servers that have those registrations at the top level domains. Now the problem with that is that if we have built the entire internet infrastructure about, around top level domains and DNS, the fundamental protocols of the internet are broken. Because if you have a man in the middle that is subject to corruption, then everything else can be corrupted with it. Now, I'm a fan of end-to-end -end encryption. I think it's a step in the right direction, and I love that we're doing that here. But end-to-end -end encryption is not enough. Now, from the perspective of, well, what can we do about it? Well, yeah, sure, we do have to own physical hardware, and that's what my company does, Dapply Connect. But physical hardware is also not enough. And I'll use an analogy to explain this. If I go into a public park and I have a journal, my diary, and I put it on the bench and it has no lock on it, and someone comes along and opens up that journal and looks inside and sees my private feelings about my wife or my kids, should I have any expectation to privacy? Probably not. Now let's say that I put a lock on that journal, and I inside I have a decipher, a little cipher code that I scribble in and I take it out and I lock it and I put a key on it and I put it in the park. Well, if someone picks it up and they break the lock, I still have the decipher codes in my pocket. They probably won't be able to read it, right? But they try and they figure out and they figure out how to break it. But my point is, is that I have an assumed right to privacy. Now, I know that here in Europe it's a little bit different, but in the U.S. we have something called third-party doctrine. So it gets even worse. And I'll use another analogy to explain this. If you look at the cell phone and connecting to a tower when you make a phone call, you're using someone's, someone else's service. You're using their hardware. You have a terms of service with them that says, yeah, I'll pay you $100 a month so that I can use my cell phone on your towers. Now, when you do that, it's just like the journal. If you've encrypted it, and you, you're on an encrypted call, then yeah, you have an assumed right to privacy. But if that encryption is broken, the problem is, is that they own the towers, and you're using their hardware as a service, which means that you have no fundamental right to privacy, because it's theirs, not yours. They own the hardware, not you. And so there's one thing, there's only one thing that I've been able to look at that has the technical infrastructure and architecture to change, fundamentally change, and bring the balance in our favor. And that is tokenizing protocols and bringing fundamental ownership to those, token, those, those protocols. So what does that mean? That means that you as an individual could own a fraction of a protocol. So what does that look like? 
We'll take DNS. It runs on every client that we have. That's how it connects. If you take the license of that DNS, you have the ability to be licensed the software to use DNS. But what if the person that imagined and created and wrote DNS, or that group of people, gave the license out for free and then tokenized the ownership of the protocol itself, tokenized the ownership in the protocol, and then gave it to every device as a public-private key pair? What that means is that fundamentally every single person in this room could have ownership in the protocol itself. And what that changes fundamentally is that for the first time in human history, we have the ability to take back ownership of the protocols that we use day to day. That when we use the hardware with the protocols that we own, even if it's a little sliver of a massive protocol that's being divided up a million times, we actually can own that protocol as we connect to our peers. So even if I'm making that phone call over the tower, I'm connecting to the peer with the protocol that I own. So in the US, when you have something in your house, and I live in the US, when you have something in your house, you have the right to privacy and the right for them to obtain a search warrant to get the data. In that same way, you have the data at home, you have the protocols at home, and when you leave the house, you connect via a protocol you own, which gives you that right to the same level of privacy. So this is big, guys. This is something that is not, has never been imagined before. And I know that some of you are smirking, and I challenge you to go look into it, to research it, to actually see if what I'm saying is true. And if it's not, contact me. Because <laughs> I want to know what you guys think about this, because this could fundamentally change everything. The stuff that Linus talked about yesterday, this is a fundamental implementation detail that could change everything. And that's what I wanted to leave with you. Thanks, guys.